there's a reason for me asking, when did you decide that's it, I'm going to retire from football? <laughs> I th it's interesting, actually. I think Steve Koppel was probably the first manager, and you sit in front of quite a few that tell you uh, your time's up. Um, I was waiting for that tap on the shoulder. If you hang around long enough, it comes. I did have another chance to play for another year. I was nearly 39 and opted out of that. Oxford United um, gave me an opportunity and they were relegated that season. And I perhaps could see that and thought, I don't want to be a part of um, my local club going down because I'll have it with me forever. And I wouldn't really have been in the best shape to keep them out of going down. So I didn't, I stepped out really. I make, you make the call, call ultimately, but you start going down the ladder um, and it's it's a little bit more difficult when you're yeah. not playing with it. Yeah, you know when you I suppose you you know you Joe is now doing that. He's opting out. Thirty six for me looks quite early. Um, I'm not sure why that is. Whether I mean I was motivated, seriously motivated. My body just didn't come with me, and that's the thing. When the two are in tandem, when you're you know around about thirty one, thirty two, when the two are together, it's mm. like a beano out there on the pitch. You read everything so so easily. Well, I think you have the pace <laughs> to deal with it. But when your body starts to let you down. I don't know if that's the case with Joe. Uh, he's been up in Scotland now, hasn't he? Won two uh, Premier Leagues up there. Yeah. Uh, maybe he wants to bow out while he's at the top. Well, I mean, he's had some career, uh, has he not? We'll, we'll look more closely at it in a second, but 75 caps for England, two Premier League titles with Manchester City, um, four Premier League Golden Glove awards, five trophies so far at Celtic. Um, and he's been saying why he's announced now that it's going to be time up for him at the end of the season. Physically, I feel great. I feel as good as I possibly can do, I think, for my age and what I've, what I've done physically to my body. You know, I've been on the bench since I was 15, almost involved in professional football, especially from 16 every day onwards. You know, I've had peaks in terms of fitness. I've had, you know, different energy, world changing around me 20 to 30, but, um, you know, physically a real peak time of my life. And then from 30 onwards, football's not been necessarily as clean for me from maybe 31 to 34. I've gone down every avenue I can to keep myself in the best possible shape and the best possible position to, to give my all come game day. And right now I'm, I'm at that, but I'm aware that time waits for no man. And um, I don't want my body to be retiring me. So that was one of the key factors. That was one of the key factors, he says. I didn't want my body to retire me. Of course, we know what he's been through, Simon. Um, and he, he's, he's, that, he's had a career whereby he's, he's had a few knocks along the way. Uh, at Manchester City, of course, we know what happened there. He, he, he had been first choice at the Etihad. Pep arrives in 2016. He was moved to third choice uh, behind Claudio Bravo and Willy Caballero. Two years in a five-year deal playing for England at the time, he secured a move away from the club, went to Torino, then at a stint after that, at West Ham on loan Burnley signed him on a permanent deal before Tottenham took him the following season persisted 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 and then ended up at Celtic and so I mean to be quite honest he deserves I think a bit of a pat in the back for persisting when he had knock after knock after knock hurdle to overcome hurdle to overcome um, I'm not a huge admirer of him as goalkeeper I think he's all right um, I think there were times in England tournaments where he wasn't great and some of the goals that we conceded in key games were particularly down to him. I think if you if you look at the Man City move and then you look at his career after that, maybe Pep Guardiola saw precisely where he was going. We talk about persistence. There was a tacit acceptance of going into Tottenham Hotspur by Hugo Lloris that you're going to be a number two goalkeeper. Where did that come from? Is that persistence or is that acceptance? And you look at the move to Celtic, you know, his direction of travel post-Manchester City has been sort of either at very best in a straight line, more often than not downwards from the higher echelons of elite football. Um, he's had a good career. He's played for his country 75 times. Um, I think post the Man City move, I don't think he's been wonderful. I think he's done a decent job for Celtic, but Celtic have been a decent side in a rather average league. They've dominated that league since he's been there, uh, with this season being a slightly more challenging one. I would suspect that maybe there aren't a huge litany of offers. Maybe Celtic aren't renewing his contract and maybe all those considerations come into the fore. 36 years of age for a goalkeeper isn't huge. He's played for 20-odd years, an average of 26 games a season. Um, and if you look at some of the performances, I think he had a very difficult time in Torino. I don't think he had a great time when he was at West Ham. Mm. Uh, and I think he was quite fortuitous. Besides the image of Joe Hart and head and shoulders and, and, and the fact that he was an England goalkeeper... I think he's been. I think he's fortunate to have gotten the career that I he's got. I think that's a, a tad unkind. I'm just going to. I think the beginning of his career. 
I think he was at a certain level. And I think he maybe had been one of those at the early part of his career was at the, a really high level. And maybe that fell a little bit. I think Pep absolutely killed him when he took him out when he did. I think that would have, he'd have suffered massive loss of confidence at that period. And I think since then he hasn't necessarily recovered. Um, I don't, I mean, I'm, I think you're a long time retired. You don't think since then he's recovered? I don't think he's been, well, he hasn't, has he played in the England team since then? Well, no, and I suppose, and I hate saying it, he ends up at one of the old firm. And obviously, when you've been at a level that he's been at, the question is always asked, well, is that the best you could end up with? Yeah, it's always I, asked that so question. So what are we now talking since Pep's been there? Six, uh, seven years, eight mm, years? Mm. Um, and, we, and he was the first player that he took out of there. And it would have, that would have hurt deeply. Yeah. So, you know, and, and he carried on playing, hasn't he? And it would have been looking over his shoulder, perhaps, at what they've, uh, they've achieved. But you're a long time finish when you, Jim. It's, uh, senior players used to say it to me, play as long as you can. And I'm pretty glad I did that. Because it, it's never quite the same. You always feel a bit restless. Yeah. Um, maybe I think he's bowing out. Goalkeepers now are going to 40 plus. We saw Pep, or Pepe as you want to call him, playing the other night for Porto. 41 years of age. Yeah. This week. So well, I mean, at 36, no one has a career forever. And most industries, you get. If he, he's had a 20 year career. He's played 170 games in the last eight years. Um, and economically, there probably is no necessity. And if he thinks it's time for him to have gone out and finished at football, then, then he moves on to the next stage of his career. I don't think it's unkind in the characterization of the question. You're, you're right to suggest that he was a burning, blazing, bright, uh, blazing light that came into people's focus, goes from Shrewsbury, moves into the big leagues, get into the England side and gets all the plaudits to go with it. But the characterization of the question from Jim was, should he be admired for his persistence and his con continuation? Well, if you're suggesting to me that he's fallen down from adversity and is unable to climb back to the heights, I don't think that's something you should admire. I think you admire people that overcome yeah, but it adversity. might be that some players, I mean, look, I was looking at Des Walker, played 50 games for England on the, on, on the, on the spin. And then hardly played again. So some players do it at the beginning of their careers and some players do it at the end of their but careers. But the characterisation of the question was, should we admire his fortitude? Should we admire his persistence, given the fact that seven, eight, nine years ago, in life, if the worst adversity that you're going to have mm. is somebody doesn't fancy you and you capitulate underneath that and deteriorate as a result of that, you're going to have some real challenges once you step out of this wonderful little protected environment called football and get into the real world where people don't care who you are. Yeah, but I'm saying done. that the second yeah. half of his career, obviously his standards fell below that level because he wasn't able to prove. Well, I also think, in, I also think in, in his pomp at international level, I think there were games in which Joe Hart was over-aroused, didn't focus in certain in certain environments and conceded goals at key times in England I games. I wouldn't argue with that. That co ultimately cost England opportunities. Yeah. So I think yeah. that should be thrown into the mix as well. I wonder, what, do, you, do you agree with Ewan Big Celtic? We'll hit, to, hit the break in a second, but Ewan is a big Celtic fan. I know Ewan, he's on the show all the time. His character and leadership probably outweighs skill as a keeper, but he's a great professional and a great man. So we wish him all the best. And I think you can't doubt his professionalism, can you? Oh, without doubt. He's carried on seven or eight years, as we've said. Yeah. Um, and he, I don't know whether there's any other opportunities, but he's certainly going to go out at the top. If you consider Celtic to be at the top, hmm. he's going to go out certainly. Well, if he swans off at the end of this season, the Rangers win the league, he might be going out on the top, will he? <laughs> Thank you for that. I think that won't happen, well aware of it. Uh, Joe Hart, we wish him well. Uh, Andy Goldstein, Darren Bent, returned this afternoon from Foreign Drive. They'll be joined in studio by former England goalkeeper Ben Foster. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.